Well, you know, when I think about this whole thing about the, the council culture, and I remember growing up as a kid, and I ran track. And sometimes we would say, man, that boy runs like Speedy Gonzalez. That wasn't being a racist. It was just admiring the fact that you had this cartoon character. Or, you know, sometimes we would poke fun at people that had body odor. Mm -hmm. We said, man, you like Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> but now all of a sudden, we are living in an age where some simple things such as that are now all of a sudden being demonized and castigated in a different way. And so I want to share with you a quick little scripture and then a couple of other things. In Romans, Romans 12 and 2, and it starts off in Romans chapter 1 saying, therefore, mm -hmm. therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, mm -hmm. to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service yes. of worship. And Romans chapter 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I've seen council culture. In the two and a half years in Afghanistan, it was called the Taliban. We've seen council culture. It was called ISIS. And all of a sudden, it is showing up here. But we've got a choice to make. And in Joshua 24 and 15, Joshua said to the children of Israel, choose for yourselves today whom you shall serve, mm -hmm. being that the gods of the Amorites or the gods from across the river, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's, right. That's, That's right. what you need to do if you're going to counsel the council culture. You need to make sure that you're talking about it in your homes, in your churches, in your communities. But pastor started talking about Texas, and there is something special about Texas. A couple of weeks ago, I stood before a place called Alamo. It was the 185th remembrance of the fall of the Alamo. But I remember that in the Alamo, there was a 26-year-old that commanded those 183, a 26-year-old. That's how old William Barrett Travis was. And legend says that that 26-year-old, if you have never read his letter that was dated 24 February 1836, read that letter where he says that I will not surrender. He says that I will not retreat. He talks about his own honor and the honor of his country. And he closed that letter with those incredible words, victory or death. But legend says that there was a time that Travis brought all of the men together in the Alamo. And he drew a sword. And he drew a line in the sand. And he said, if you stand with me and you stand for liberty and freedom, Come across this line and stand with me. And legend says that even though Jim Bowie was relegated to a bed because he was deathly ill, he had his men pick him up and bring him across that line. God right now is drawing his sword, this word of God, and he is drawing a line in the sand a line for each and every one of you that challenges you that says, which side of the line will you stand on? Down south, my mom taught me a very simple thing. A man must stand for something or else he'll fall for anything. And Thomas Jefferson once said, in matters of style, swim with the current. But in matters of substance, you stand like a rock. Make the stand. And therefore, cross that line and be on this side, the side that will stand for the future and legacy that so many people have sacrificed for us.